Hey folks, welcome back to Demystified. For our 16th episode, we're covering a project in a country and city I've yet to cover, Moscow. The project in question is the Moscow Central Diameters, a massive urban and regional rail project set to massively enhance mainline rail service and quality in Moscow. The project is a part of a series of major improvements transforming Moscow's railway network into one which is suited for a world-class 21st century city. I expect to do more videos on Moscow and Russia more broadly in the future, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I want to give a big shout out to all our supporters on Patreon for helping us to make this video happen. Consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as $1 a month to help us bring you more videos like this one. If you're not already, consider following us on Instagram and Twitter for all of our regular updates, and consider joining the community Discord server for lots of discussions around transit projects like the Moscow Central Diameters. Now, before I get into the central diameters, I need to set the stage. What led to the need for the central diameters, what inspired them, and what do they consist of? Moscow is well known for having what is perhaps the most ornate and beautiful metro system in the world, but what is less appreciated is just how heavily used the system is. Compared to the acclaimed Paris metro, the Moscow metro has less stations, and yet the system carries numbers approaching twice the daily ridership of the world's first and essential metro. While the metro has grown at a stable rate over recent decades, adding a number of stations every year, and with works accelerating in recent years, the system is highly congested. Funds are also somewhat tied up in a number of major projects. As of 2012, over 140 kilometers of new metro was under construction, with 24 tunnel boring machines running simultaneously at one point, which set a world record. All this construction has a real effect. Russia has a GDP roughly amounting to 60% of that of France's. And yet while the premier French transit project of Grand Paris Express is longer than Moscow's many metro expansions, the Moscow metro expansions are much more substantially tunneled and are built for trains several times longer than those used on Grand Paris Express. Which pushes up the costs for stations, already the largest cost driver for major subway projects. Given this, the delays associated with construction of such a drastic expansion, a new line captured the imagination of leaders. Not only did it transform the Moscow Transit Network when it opened, but its effects will continue to be felt for decades. The Moscow Central Circle Moscow's Central Circle isn't new, so to speak. The rail line, which by all means is a modern regional rail loop, started back in the early 20th century. The line was initially aimed at passenger service, but mismanagement dogged it, and so the line, which was not electrified due to engineering issues, was soon appropriated for freight use. Around 2010, the idea of passenger service on the line came back into the realm of serious consideration. The traditional metro was highly congested, as mentioned before, and because of its highly radial nature, trips from one line to another often require long backtracks as riders rode into the core, either transferring to the circle line or another radial service, before heading back out of the core. Of course, Moscow has roads like this, and this. So when transit doesn't work, people are forced onto the roads, which have become totally gridlocked in recent years. Not to mention, connectivity to major new sites, like Moscow's new international business district, were previously limited. This, along with rising costs and slowing timelines of traditional metro construction, led to a plan to do something quite different from the rest of the Moscow metro. The Central Circle, or Line 14 as it's now known, which goes to show you how the aimed level of integration between the service and the metro works, which share a fare card and feature transfer connections at the majority of stations, is a new heavy rail line in the vein of an S-Bahn, but with a single looping service, traversing the corridor of the old Central Circle Railway from over 100 years before. Constructing the line meant first constructing additional bypass infrastructure for freight services to transfer traffic to other lines further from the core, and then electrification, enabled by major infrastructure upgrades like bridge replacements, all new double and triple track, brand new stations and connections, new yards, and perhaps most importantly, new rolling stock. Creating a new 31 station, 50 plus kilometer regional rail service in just four years for only $3.2 billion. Something which has taken decades and far more capital in my home city of Toronto, which benefits from similar legacy infrastructure to Moscow. The benefits and improvements of using new rolling stock in Moscow cannot be understated. Russian heavy rail does not exactly have a history of being inviting or all that fantastic from a service perspective, 
and so the sleek, modern EMUs from Siemens deployed on the line really go a long way in changing the way people see mainline rail, something which I can confirm from my travels to Russia. If you're curious, the trains, which are based on the Desiro line, run on 3000 volts DC and of course run on Russian gauge. These same trains are also seeing deployment on some longer distance services, as Russian Railways capitalizes on the much improved vehicles. Of course, these large trains also carry a large number of people, in far more comfort than a small metro train would have been able to. The trains are also part of a new trend of Moscow getting surprisingly attractive new trains, some of which, like the new Statler Kiss trains deployed on the Aero Express, are among my favorite in the world. Of course, along with the nice trains, comes great stations and service. The central circle operates at least every 5 minutes in the peak and every 10-15 to 15 in the off-peak. This has led to very impressive ridership, with the line approaching 500,000 riders per day, just a few years after opening. This puts it within striking distance of the London Overground, which has 9 lines and over 3 times as many stations as the central circle. With the massive success of the Moscow Central Circle, it was clear that smart investments in mainline rail upgrades with enhanced stations and platforms were an effective approach for improving Moscow's railway network. So in 2017, proposals for a new network of services in the same vein as the Moscow Central Circle began to appear. By the end of the year, these proposals had solidified into a plan known as the Moscow Central Diameters, or MCD. The Moscow Central Diameters, in a way, act much like the traditional metro lines act towards the Circle Line but with the Moscow Central Circle instead. The five lines in the proposed network cut across the city connecting to metro stations and the Moscow Central Circle. The lines are set to be phased in over a span of a few years. D1 and D2 as they are denoted, opened at the end of 2019, just two years after the program was first announced. D3 is set to open in 2022, D4 in 2024, and D5 in 2025. Looking at D1 and D2, the whole program is quite promising. The lines operate frequent services, much like the Moscow Central Circle, but with high frequencies, sometimes made up from timetabled combined frequencies from other services like the Aero Express which operates on the same corridors. Trains operating on the diameter service specifically operate on unique eye-catching trains similar to those used on the Moscow Central Circle but from domestic companies. In terms of the corridors, unlike major new regional rail projects in other cities like London or Melbourne and more akin to the Moscow Central Circle, the Moscow Central Diameters used existing rail right-of-ways to cut across Moscow, allowing the lines to come into service far sooner, albeit perhaps slightly hampering the quality of connections, and providing a slightly lower class of service, which lacks the highly automated signaling and metro-like features of a project like Crossrail. In this way, the Moscow Central Diameters are perhaps more like an S-Bahn than the Moscow Central Circle. Another major part of the Moscow Central Diameters project has been the major station and corridor enhancements, improving structures, replacing tracks, and electrification infrastructure, and upgrading stations with modern amenities and for full accessibility. These changes all led to a more metro-like, high-quality service that provides more comfort and travel reliability. And the benefits of all of this work is clear. Already from day one, the Moscow Central Diameters network is carrying over half a million riders on its busiest days, taking thousands of cars off of congested streets and removing riders who would otherwise have needed to take the metro. So what does it all cost? Even more than the Moscow Central Circle, the Moscow Central Diameters is a budget project, with total costs barely above $1 billion. This is in stark contrast to Moscow's numerous and expensive metro construction projects. I think what's made clear by this, more than anything, is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to create a truly transformational transit megaproject. Perhaps one of the most important insights yet discussed in a demystified. By utilizing existing corridors and using targeted enhancements to accessibility and passenger experience, Moscow has been able to generate ridership numbers that rival entire North American cities out of thin air no massive center city tunnel needed. I think there's also a story to be told about marketing, image, and visual appeal. While old Russian mainline trains have a reputation for being ugly and dated, even more so than our trains in North America, Moscow has leapfrogged cities like Denver, Philadelphia, and New York with regional rail trains that are incredibly modern in their design. In addition, creating beautiful and sophisticated stations, which would be right at home on a world-class metro, and featuring full wayfinding and fare integration, 
also enabled the instant success and massive ridership of both the Central Diameter's first two lines, as well as the Moscow Central Circle. Clearly there's a lesson here. North American cities also frequently possess extensive regional rail networks that are totally untapped, and sometimes these networks even have the benefit of existing electrification and passenger traffic. Reinventing and relaunching modern services on these networks could be transformative, and Moscow shows us it's possible. With that, thanks for watching the 16th episode of Demystified. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.